My name's Janet Carding. I'm the acting director of the Australian Museum, and I'd like to welcome everybody here today. Um, we're here for a very special day to mark the display of the Keeping Place collection of Gordon and Elaine um, Fyron. <laughs> and now I'd like to introduce the Honourable Michael Kirby, former Justice of the High Court of Australia, um, one of Australia's longest serving judges and since his retirement in 2009 has continued to be involved widely in legal issues, both internationally and, of course, here in Australia. The Honourable Michael Kirby. Look up, my people. The dawn is breaking. The world is waking to a new bright day when none will shame us, no spirit tame us, nor fear detain us, uh, nor a hope dismay. See clear the promise, dark freedom lover. Night's nearly over, and though long the climb, new rights will greet us, new mateship meet us, and joy complete us in our new dream time. To our fathers' fathers, the pain, the sorrow, to our children's children, the bright tomorrow. It's thoughts like those that uh, inspire me as I come here this morning to launch this exhibition. Now, Gordon and I share a lot in common. We were both born, um, uh, well, he was a bit younger, not that much younger, but he was a bit younger. Uh, we were born during the Second World War uh, and we both had a long experience with the law. I went on <laughs> to become a judge. Uh, Gordon went on to become, well, how shall I put this, one of Her Majesty's most honoured guests. <laughs> and I'm going to London next week, and I hope I can reveal this, Gordon, uh, I'm going to London uh, because I've been appointed to be a member of a new so-called eminent persons group. I don't feel quite comfortable with declaring myself to be an eminent person at this late stage in my life, but Her Majesty has invited the eminent persons, nine of us, uh, who are going to advise the Commonwealth of Nations on the future of the Commonwealth of Nations. And the Queen has invited us to Buckingham Palace. Well. Gordon has got an idea and he's presented me with a very wonderful uh, work which is actually the work of the uh, 11 vessels of the First Fleet coming into the Sydney Harbour through uh, the great rocks which are the pillars of entry into our beautiful harbour and city. And he's asked me to present this to Her Majesty. Maybe, Gordon, we can show the, the work, which is, I think, uh, a singularly beautiful work that Gordon wants me to present to the Queen. Now you'll see, Gordon has a thing about blue. Gordon is a very blue artist, uh, and he loves blue, and I love blue, and I think the Queen will love blue. You'll see there are um, the little ships just coming, you remember how they came off the coast and into the harbour uh, and um, uh, then there is an Aboriginal Australian walking on water uh, as these ships with their portent of mighty change were coming into the harbour and um, the cliffs themselves lit by moonlight are singularly beautiful uh, and it's both a historical representation but also it's uh, a very beautiful artistic work. So I think that the Queen will be very lucky to get such a work and of course it's full of symbolism as well. Uh, nothing Gordon does or very few things Gordon does are not full of symbolism. So uh, I'm going to be very pleased to uh, uh, present those uh, to the Queen as a gift from Gordon and Elaine uh, and as a representation of the importance of 
uh, the uh, keeping place. This is a message from 400 artists to save the keeping place. And the keeping place is made up of uh, over 400 different artists as artwork belongs to. Is to, to, the, to the Queen of England. Now, there is a particular practical problem that brings us here this morning, and it is the fact that the keeping place, which is there uh, in uh, what was once a railway shed uh, in Redfern, uh, is um, going to be vacated, has to be vacated, an eviction notice has been served by the Redfern Waterloo Corporation, and this marvellous and really unique collection, which I saw on Friday night, uh, has to suddenly and very quickly be safely rehoused. And how it's going to be rehoused and what is going to happen to it and how you keep together this unique and amazing collection uh, of art, which is truly Indigenous art, not made in... Uh, foreign countries by foreigners but made by Australians in Australia. A whole variety of works of representative kind you see on the walls here beautifully displayed in this great museum. Uh, what is going to happen to it? Various suggestions have been made. One, that uh, it should be collected and put in a museum or some exhibition space in Barangaroo, the new waterfront. Uh, area in Sydney which is suggested uh, as a development. Now I don't know if that's the best space but wherever it's placed it ought to be placed with honour and properly curated, and properly safeguarded uh, as a, an indication of the, of the brilliance and beauty of the art of our Indigenous artists in Australia. So we have gathered here this morning to honour the Indigenous people, to honour the Indigenous artists, to honour in particular Gordon Siren, uh, and to express the hope and the determination that the art which is collected in the keeping place will be very safely, properly and honourably housed after uh, Gordon and Elaine are required to vacate it uh, in the space of the next few weeks. It's an urgent and serious problem and I hope that a proper uh, and honourable solution can be found to it. So without more ado, and in the presence of Paul the Octopus and all the beautiful works of Gordon around, uh, I have much pleasure in opening uh, this exhibition. <laughs> 